So I'm just waiting uh, a couple of moments just to see when we're actually live. Hopefully you should be able to see some of these images and hopefully you'll be going along to see some of the event starting in just a moment. Okay, so there's a couple of you ticking boxes that you can hear me okay, which is great. Okay, 10 of you, evening all. Uh, pleased to welcome you on board. Um, I think I've got a slight delay in what's occurring, about 12 seconds, but hopefully you'll be able to keep up with me. Okay. Settings. Uh, don't worry, uh, anonymous one nine three. Um, I can still read your chats here. Um, just say hello in in the screen at the bottom. I think you should be able to log in. And click here on the screen. Uh, you should be able to change your chat name. It doesn't matter if you log in, but if you just change your chat name here. I'll be able to see who's online. Who's that? Jadil, hello. Nice to see you. Hello. And Harry. Seven, three. Good to see you. Oh, 14 of you. Who to say hello. Well done, Aiden. Yeah, I agree. He's trouble. Um, I'll try and keep up with the chat as we're going through. I've already had one chat request to ask if I can go through half neutralization. So I will make sure that we look at half neutralization through the YouTube stream at some point. I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes. We're up to 15 watching now. Um, and I'm just going to see if that stabilizes. Evening, Chris. Good to see you. And just while those of you logged into the chat are here, cal yes, we'll do plenty of pH calculations, 5831, don't worry. Um, I'm just going to show you around the website. And hopefully then we should be ready to go. Hi, Jadil. Yep, this is AQA. Oh. AQA specification specifically, um, although the questions, I guess, are related to OCR. <laughs> Phew. Okay, I'll just take you on a quick tour of the site so if you've not been here before we've got the home page here and the first webinars will be coming out free uh, this week and hopefully you'll be able to, to view them if you want to subscribe to get more resources and webinar news, just uh, fill in the subscription page on the front page here, and I'll uh, send out MailChimps to you to remind you about the webinars. Do share with any friends on the Join Us page. Um, there's information here. If you're thinking about joining, there is specification information on the A-level resources. Uh, information about your required practicals, what's in the exam, all video content is you'll find here with key concept questions um, for all of the topics in the year one course. 
along with some past paper questions for the AS specification. And then on the year T course, you'll find similar what's in the A level. Uh, slowly updating here the transition metals this week. There seems to be quite a few requests for that. Um, and all of your organic stuff. And then I'm building up slowly some practice papers for you to try with some mark schemes. You'll also find the AQA specimen papers in here. Um, and you're going to have three exam papers. This evening, we're going to be looking here at the acids, bases, pH and buffers. And hopefully you've got the material for the forum. Um, if after the session you've got any questions, just fill them in on the Q&A forum. Um, and the webinar, if you wanted to find it, you'll find past webinars available here along with the resources. You'll just click on this link. This one here from today's webinar, uh, that's going to be updated as soon as this webinar is finished. Uh, as well, if you want the course material here, revision sheets and the question sheets from the uh, webinar. Uh, Aidan, yes, the webinars will be available after the session. And to deal, probably be about an hour to 90 minutes of webinar. Uh, we'll see how we get on. Depends how long you guys can take, probably. Okay, close my screen down now. Do make sure we're going to start on the revision notes. Okay, so hopefully you got a copy of those. They're on the live webinar page. Once we've been through that, we'll start having a look at the question sheets here again for the webinar. We'll look through those as we go. If you've not got a copy, uh, don't worry. Just open them up as a PDF on a separate window. Okay, I'm just going to change to this shot, the web chat viewer for the presenter so that I can actually see the stream. I'm going to close these down and we will get going in just a moment. Evening, just to show it's me. I hope you can see me. I'm just going to change my screen now. I'm going to be sharing screen one. And hopefully now everyone should be able to see the same as me. And I can also see the chat viewers. Fantastic. All right, so we're going to start off here with our Key concepts from acids, bases, pH, buffers, and titrations. Uh, make sure you can see this. We'll go through the quick key concept questions, and then we're just going to spend the rest of the session applying those concepts um, in our past paper questions that we've got here. All right. You will also get a link to this OneNote page if you feel you need it at the end of the session. So hopefully you've studied this. It was probably quite a while ago. Uh, the revision notes cover here the key equations for the whole of the topic. The only one here that's not included, the reference as to what pKa is. And pKa here is equal to minus the log base 10 of Ka. Okay, that's the only real addition that we need to include to those equations. Our definition of pH is here is pH equals minus log 10 of the concentration of hydrogen ions. Just remember this square brackets is meaning concentration. 
um, and we're always interested in the hydrogen ions. We've got Ka. Now Ka here is if we're ever using a weak acid. Um, we'll recall what we mean by those in a minute. Kw here we're using for bases and we'll see this key ideas when we need to use the bases. Um, and then we've got the reverse of pH here um, if you're aware of how to use uh, pH equals minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration. If you're not sure about that, that's how we do the reverse. There's a couple of key concepts that we need to recall. The first is of, I'll just scribble them down here, the idea of a strong acid. And a strong acid is said to be something that fully dissociates into its ions in solution. A minus here is determined as the salt. This is an important definition as we say this is the acid and this is simply the proton when we come to discussions later on. Uh, the other term here is a strong base. Uh, strong base, really we're talking about alkali, so that's it's things that dissolve. And those are going to be metal hydroxides, and they're going to form M plus and importantly OH minus in solution. And then our weak acids, we come to it a little bit later on, a weak acid importantly has got the acid and this only partially dissociates by definition which means we have a equilibrium set up and we have a small amount of the hydrogen ions and we have a small amount of the salt and we have a probably larger amount of the acid we also get these for weak bases weak um, and the ones that you'll be interested in would be something like ammonia uh, and that's going to react with something like water here and that would be a weak base to form NH4 plus plus OH minus again all AQ. I'm not seeing anything coming through on the web chat so hopefully all of those ideas are fairly straightforward. Um, on this revision sheet, I've got here how to deal with mixing solutions, and I'm not going to worry about them too much at the moment, but these two boxes here are when we're talking about mixing acids and bases. This is if we're mixing a strong acid and a strong base. And this one here is if we're mixing a, making a buffer solution. But basically you're, you're mixing a weak acid and a strong base. And we're going to come back to those as we come across them in the questions. The other th thing to note here is we've got how an acidic and a basic buffer work. Once again, I'm not going to go through this too much now until we come to some line. Okay, so I'll just check everyone's all right. So Everyone ready to start some questions? Hopefully no one's an enthusiastic yes is always good to see. Let's have a look then. So all of the questions we'll be looking at this evening are past paper exam questions from the AQA exam board. Um, it is a new specification that you're taking. However, 
the questions are only going to be really limited in uh, to a number that you can really ask at the end of the day. Uh, cool, ready? Right, let's go then. Let's have a look at some of these past exam questions. Uh, open these up either in a PDF or print them out. Um, you might want to sit there and have a go at them on a sheet of paper. Uh, remember, for your exams, you want to be working at mark a minute sort of timings. All right, so mark a minute is the sort of times that you want to be going for. So let's crack on and see what we've got. Here we are, then titration curves. So here we've got a series of different curves and we've got E, F, G and H. It says titration curves labeled E, F, G and H, a combination of different aqueous solutions of acids and bases shown below. All titration curves are of 0.1 mole dm minus three. In this part of the question, write the appropriate letter in each box. From the curve E, F, G, choose the curve produced by the addition of sodium hydroxide to ethanoic acid. So quickly, let's look at each of these. You can have a go at these questions just while I'm explaining each of the terms. We've got a very low pH. So here we've got a strong acid. And we've got a strong base. We've got here a strong acid in the pot. And we're acting it with a weak base. This one, we've got a weak acid. And just to recall, this is a classic start of any weak acid. So if you're looking at titration curves, this little lip at the beginning is often for a weak acid. And we're going to a very high pH, so we're probably here with a strong base. This last one, we start with a strong base. And we're going down to a weak acid. So sodium hydroxide to 25 cm cubed of ethanoic acid. We're adding a strong base to a weak acid. Hopefully everyone went here for G. No complaints, which is good. The next one, ammonia. Well, ammonia to, hate, to hydrobromic acid. Well, this is perhaps something we've not seen before. Um, but we're still talking about hydrogen with a group 7 halide. So this is probably a strong acid. Um, ammonia is a classic weak base. Uh, so here we're most likely looking at F. As we look now on page 3 here, hydrochloric acid to potassium hydroxide or hydrochloric acid to potassium hydroxide. Well, we're adding a strong acid to a strong base. So in this one, well, that one says weak acid. It probably should say strong acid. I think we are most likely yeah, looking at H. Yeah, good spot, Anon. I think you're right. Yeah. Anon. I also think it should be a strong acid. You're all right. It should be a strong acid in there. Thanks for pointing that out. Well done. It's always worth keeping me on my toes. Now, no particular issues there with drawing those. You could be asked to identify or you could be asked to draw those. Either way, uh, make sure you're aware. Um, then we might be asked to decide on a suitable indicator for a given reaction. Um, the key thing is that we want an indicator which is going to work uh, over, if we've got pH here on the side, we've got a volume added. We want our pH indicator to work when our graph is showing a sharp change in pH. Uh, so as we go down here, we're going to look at this table shows information about some acid base indicators. Uh, these don't matter that you've never seen them before. The key thing is the pH ranges and look at the lower pH, remembering that that's going to be on the acid side and the high pH. 
So which indicator in the table would be used for the titration that produces curve E, but not for the titration of curve F? So curve E here, well, we've got a, we're looking for something between 3 and 12, and for F, between 4 and 7. So we want something, the ones at the bottom here would be no good. Um, Pentamethoxy red is possible, but the ideal one is probably naphthyl red. Again, if you've not seen that, it doesn't make any difference. We're just interested in the pH range where it changes. Hopefully quite an easy question to start us off there. One mark for each question. Uh, give the color change at the end point of the titration curve, H, when naphthyl red is used as the indicator. So when naphthyl red is used at the, of H, so we need to go and have a look at H. Remember, we're looking at the low pH. So we went, want something when it's less than about pH 2. For naphthyl red, well, we're looking at the lower pH. So naphthyl red here, our end, we're going to be looking at the answer red. Uh, a beaker contains 25 cm cubed of buffer solution at pH 6. Two drops of each of the four indicators in the table are added to this solution. State the color of the mixture of the indicator in this buffer solution. You should assume that the indicators do not react with each other. Mm -hmm. Slightly odd question. So pH 6 for the solution. Uh, so we would be, naphthyl red would be yellow. Uh, Nitrophenol would be between colourless and yellow, so that would probably be a good one. Cresol uh, purple, well, that would be on this side, so we'd be looking at yellow. And pentamethoxy red would thankfully be colourless. So our answer here would have to be yellow. Okay, so question about indicators and titration curves to keep us going. Um, everyone, hopefully, not too bad then. Uh, so I'll just check before I go running ahead. Any questions? Sorry, I spelt questions wrong. Okay, so I'm going to assume, uh, can we go back through 1B1, please? 1B1. Okay, so one, which indicator in the table could be used for the titration that produces curve E, but not that that produces F? So in curve E, we're looking for an indicator which is going to change color in that range because it's when it's going to be sharp whereas in f it's going to change in that range between four and eight so we want one that works for e but doesn't work for f so the one that's not going to work for s f is something in that sort of region in other words one that changes color at greater than well probably about 8.0. So if I go back and look at my options, there may be a good point there. Good spot. The one that we probably actually want to use, Maloney, well done. You spotted a mistake. So Cressol Purple would be the better one to use because that's the one which is going to change at a pH of about 8.0. Sorry for any confusion there. Oh. Any more questions? Okay, so...
let's have a look here then at our first question where we're going to start looking at some calculations. Remember here, we're interested in our key equations from this front page. We're talking about uh, acids, bases, and we're looking at bases in this question. So be aware of that. We've got KW values. So KW, we're even given, although you'd be expected to know this in the exam. So I wouldn't work on that, normally be being given that as an um, expression. But if we were to write the KC for this expression, we would have H plus OH minus over the concentration of H2O. Now, the key here is that the concentration of H2O uh, is going to remain almost unchanged as it's very large. So therefore, what we can assume is that Kc is going to be equivalent to, uh, sorry, we'll go to the right, we can write a new expression, Kw is going to be equivalent to Kc multiplied by the concentration of water, and that's because this value is virtually unchanged, which is going to be equivalent, which is equal to the H plus iron concentration and the OH minus concentration. So the first question here, explain why the expression for Kc does not include the concentration of water. Uh, we can simply indicate, it's only a one mark, that the concentration of H2O is very high. Okay, do just drop a question in if you pick one up. Okay, explain why the value of Kw increases as the temperature increases. So here, if we look back at the data, you'll notice that at 50 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius, there's an increase in Kw. Well, in order to do that, we need to look at the expression. So here we're looking at H2O in a reversible reaction to make H plus plus OH minus. The key thing about going in this direction is it's bond breaking, which is an endothermic process. And therefore, we'll shift that to the right-hand side if we increase the temperature. OK, so when we come to... Okay, uh, Jadil, sorry, I just picked up your question there. Uh, yes. You don't have to write all of that. That was just a whole load of exp explanation with the question. So when we actually come to what we're looking for in the question as to why KW increases, if you think here, uh, because we've got KW is equal to H plus concentration, OH minus concentration, our marking points are for simply saying that uh, H2O, and it's always worth including uh, equations in these, is endothermic, and then argue it on a basis of equilibrium shift. All right, so you therefore you say, therefore, Equilibrium shifts to the right hand side, opposing the increase in temperature, and I would also say increasing the concentration of H plus and OH minus. Because that really is why KW, although the key that they're looking for is a shift in equilibrium. Now there's 
I'm just checking our questions from the webinar room. It doesn't seem to be anything so far. Um, when we're doing calculations, there's always going to be hints in the question. Um, reflect back on these equations. All right. We are given values of kW, which means that we must be interested in this equation, the kW equals H plus OH minus. So we're given values of kW, so we've got to be able to use it. We need to use this expression because uh, we need to know what the OH minus concentration is. Um, and we've got values of OH minus. So we tend to use it for strong bases, but we also do here for water. Um, calculate the pH of pure water at 50 degrees Celsius. Well, pH, remember, is by definition the minus log of the H plus ions. All right, so as you're working through this, uh, we need to work out what H plus is. Rearranging the equation. Gives us KW o slash over OH minus. And then we just need to simply pick out some values here. I'm just going to go back to the page. Five point four eight times ten to the minus fourteen. Okay, W is five point four eight times ten to the minus fourteen. And it's a little perplexing, perhaps, but we've got a, what we're not sure of here is what the OH minus concentration is. Well, in this unique case, um, because we're talking about water, the concentration of H plus uh, and uh, yes, there is, uh, which I'll. I'll put the answer sheet on at the end in the in, in the past webinar room, if that's all right, and I'll I'll send you the link. Uh, let's have a see. Just check. Okay, sorry, I was just responding to Anon at double zero twenty one. Um, the question is what the OH minus concentration is here. Well, for water, um, the H plus concentration is equal to the OH minus concentration. This is only for water. What that means is H plus multiplied by OH minus is equal to five point four eight times 10 to the minus 14. Which is equivalent to H plus squared in this particular example. Therefore, the square root of is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration. If we work that through, I'm running out of a little bit of space here. Uh, the hydrogen ion concentration, this is your first mark in this particular question, will be equal to 2.34 times 10 to the minus seven. Uh, finally, if you then work through pH equals minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration, so there is your first mark. Uh, pH equals minus log, you would then get pH 
equals minus log of 2.34 times 10 to the minus 7. Hopefully you'll get out about 6.63. Okay, and then we'll work through the final question. Calculate the pH of 0.12 mole aqueous sodium hydroxide at 50 degrees C. Give your answer to two decimal places. Uh, so here we've got to use OH minus again. We've got to go for KW is equal to H plus OH minus. This is not a necessity to have these out. We're just really working them through. Um, We get to our expression here, our hydrogen ion concentration. Well, we use Kw as the same value here. 5.48 times 10 to the minus 14 over our concentration of sodium hydroxide. Now, our assumption here is that the concentration of OH minus is simply the same as NaOH added. Now that's a fairly good assumption. Uh, the concentration of OH minus from the water is about times 10 to the minus 7, so it's not going to have any serious effect. So it's divided by 0.12 here. For one mark we get a hydrogen concentration well that actually gets us one mark in this question um, gives us a value of 4.56 6 times 10 to the minus 13 again one mark and then pH equals the minus log of this uh, if you take the minus log of that value we end up with 12. Three, four. Remember, you're always asked for these into two decimal places. So 2dp for your pH. It's got to be 2dp, otherwise you're not going to get them up. Okay, so that's gone through quite nicely. Hopefully, um, the dissociation of water, Kw. Also, what happens if we change the temperature of Kw um, and relative and associated questions. Do give me a shout if you've got any questions there about pH, KW of water questions. I just pause for a drink of water. Okay. Moving on then. Uh, let's have a look and see what we've got here with uh, some of our weak acid questions, which typically sort of, this is certainly a classical way that they ask acid-based questions in the exams. Here we've got to state the meaning of the term weak acid as applied to carboxylic acids. Well, Really, it's going to be anything. So our simple definition, as we've seen before, is an acid that partially dissociates. That's the wording they're looking for. Um, I would fill it out. But acid that partially dissociates when dissolved in water. to pad it out fully, but that's a key. Okay, write an equation for the reaction of propanoic acid with sodium carbonate. Well, here we go. We've got CH3, CH2, COOH. Careful when you're writing something like propanoic acid that you don't add in too many carbons. Uh, we're adding sodium carbonate, Na2CO3. Um, and we'll get products here of the sodium salt. Now, the salt of the acid is simply when we remove the hydrogen ion. So we have CH3, CH2, 
two COO minus, and then we've got the sodium there. We have water, and we've got CO2. Make sure that you take care to balance these equations. We're certainly going to need here uh, two of these and two of those. Okay, calculate the pH of 0.012 mole DM minus 3 solution of calcium hydroxide, the ionic product of water, Kw. Okay, so massive hint here. We're given Kw. Kw, we must be talking about a base. H plus OH minus. That's what we've got to think about if we're seeing anything with Kw in the exam. Uh, importantly here as well, now, I wouldn't expect them to ask this in the exam uh, because you're generally only asked for monobasic, but this is dibasic. In other words, there's two OH minuses per calcium hydroxide. That means the concentration of OH minus here is actually going to be two times the concentration of CO2 because it's going to break down to form Ca2 plus, plus 2OH minus. So the first thing to identify, the first marking point is that the concentration of OH minus here is equal to two times 0.012, which is equal to 0.024. Make sure you're aware of that. Um, it's also true if we're talking about acids, uh, so things like if we've got something like H2SO4, then you've got to 2H plus formed. So just be aware if we've got diprotic or dibasic substances. Then we are rearranging hydrogen ions. It's equal to Kw over OH minus. Well, we're given the expression here. And 0.024, giving you a value here of 4.166 times 10 to the minus 13. That's going to get you a mark. That's going to get you a mark. And then the concentration uh, conversion is going to be pH equals minus log h plus uh, put that into your calculator two decimal places remember is going to get you 11 sorry 12.38 uh, some people use poh um i just think it's complicated don't bother using it, it makes your life more complicated trying to remember more things Okay, how are we getting on? There's still uh, some of you in the room, I presume. Some of you in the chat. No comment. Okay, so the value of the acid association constant Ka for benzene carboxylic acid. Um, here's the expression. Um, it's 6.31 times 10 to the minus uh, 5. So we're now talking about here, hint, Ka. As soon as we're talking about Ka, we've got to be thinking about this expression. So make sure you use it. Now, that is if they're asking for a general equation. Here we're asked for specifically for benzene carboxylic acid. So if you're asked for a specific acid make sure you include that in the equation otherwise you won't be given the marks in the exam so benzene carboxylic acid is a bit of a faff to write it out but just get used to it so the proton then we've got the salt of the acid like that over the concentration of the acid here gets you your one mark that's going to be reasonably useful. I'm actually just going to pinch that 
um because uh, it's probably going to be on the next page knowing what this sort of thing is like so i'm just going to copy that because i'm probably going to use it for my next page okay indeed here we are i'm just going to switch that out there Oop. drag that over here a bit uh, i just need my pen again being on green i'm going to try a bit of blue see if anyone notices all right so calculate the ph of 0.012 dm solution of benzene carboxylic acid give your answer to two decimal places now we is we haven't mixed this at all um so this is an unmixed situation therefore the concentration of h plus is equal to that of c6 h5 coo minus therefore we can simplify this equation to be h plus squared over the concentration of c6 h5 cooh um, hopefully everyone's happy with that um to shout if that's an issue uh, just add your chat questions to the bottom okay uh then it's just simply a case of rearranging this well we're going to have here ka uh multiplied by the concentration of c6h5cooh uh that's going to give us h plus squared Um, and then to get to the concentration of hydrogen ions, well, we just take the square root of that. Common time that we then actually make a mistake in the calculation, but um, if you put that incorrectly, you should end up with a value here of 3.08 times 10 to the minus 5. We're using here the, constant, the Ka value which we're given at the bottom of this page here. So our Ka value is here, which is 6.31 times 10 to the minus five. And we'll be using that as our value in there. And our concentration is 0 0.012. Uh, the pH then is equal to the minus the log of that. Uh, Pop that into your calculator. Remember, again, we're only down to two decimal places, and hopefully you should end up with a the three marks. Two DP, no units, four point five one. Now we're on to the slightly more difficult question. The classic way of asking these questions is to take you through questions getting progressively more complicated until we end up to the classic buffer solution all right a buffer solution with a ph of four is made using benzene carboxylic acid and sodium benzene carboxylate so what we're doing here is we're making uh, a buffer solution just to remind you c6h5cooh is in equilibrium here with not too far, C6H5COO minus plus H plus. Now, oh, okay, you got a different pH. Uh, can you write down your pH for me? I think it's, uh, it's okay. I'm just chatting. Part of me is using the mark scheme here, um, and they've actually used a different value for the Ka here. So, uh, thanks for checking. Um, okay. 
Well, the neuronal expression of the acid. Right. Okay, so that here, the mark scheme is using a different Ka value. You got 3.06. So this value, let me just check, this value is different, was it? Okay, well, let me rattle through the question. I'll double check. Um, let's use uh, the question. 6.31 times 10 to the minus 5. 6.31 to the power minus 5 times by uh, 0.012 equals square root of the answer. Okay, so that value I've actually got as 8.701 times 10 to the minus 4. If I take minus the log of the answer here, yeah, 3.06. Okay, the reason it came out at 4.51 is the mark scheme is slightly different there. The mark scheme uses a different Ka value that I was looking at there. Conclusion. I'll make sure my mark scheme is updated. Well done for spotting it. That is a correct answer based on the, the numbers that we got in the question. Good to see you doing the calculations as we go through as well. Okay. So back to our buffer solution. If this was just a weak acid and not a buffer, we would have lots of this, we'd have a little of this, and we'd have a little of this. Um, happen in this reaction is if we added h plus then h plus would c6 h5 coo minus plus the h plus uh, would go to form c6 h5 coo h but there'd be a problem because this value of the salt is low it would be used up and therefore the h plus uh, concentration would increase rapidly that's if we had a weak acid so what a buffer does therefore is if we look at the buffer situation we need to change this such that let's just make this an eraser hey? And what we need to do is we actually need to increase the value of this to make this so that we got lots of this. And if we do that in the buffer, then what we end up with is if we have C65COO minus, if we add some H plus to a solution, plus H plus, the equilibrium shifts, uh, keeping the H plus iron concentration constant. And in that sense, we are creating a buffer. So when we're creating a buffer, the key is to make sure that we increase that concentration. And there's a couple of ways of doing this, which we'll have a look at here. Um, we can increase Uh, the buffer concentration. So I just need to zoom in. Either 
by adding a weak acid and a strong base together, or we can simply add in some uh, buffer to that. So we're going to see what we got in this reaction that we got here. We're simply going to add some salt into this mixture to increase the amount of the salt, so that we can react the concent so we can increase the concentration of the salt and we create a buffer. So let's have a look here uh, at what we're doing. Calculate the mass of sodium carboxylate that should be dissolved in one dm cubed of 0.012 dm minus three solution of benzene carboxylic acid to produce a buffer with a pH of 4.0. So buffer calculation, what we're going to have is we've got Ka key reactions is H plus, A minus, so we've got C6H5COO minus, and we've also got the concentration of C6H5COOH. Um, I'm just going to double check here. The value that they've used for the acid dissociation. I'm going to recalculate this as we go through. And we've also got this equation where we've got pH equals minus the log of the hydrogen concentration. Okay, so what do we know from this question? Well, we know that we've got the pH, so we can find out the H plus concentration. We've got Ka, and we're trying to find out the value of the C6H5COO minus. And we've also got the concentration here of C6H5COOH. So we should have everything we need in order to find out the concentration of C6H5COO minus and therefore the mass. First thing then, work out the H plus. So here, 10 to the minus pH. I'm going to work this through because I think my answers here are wrong for this particular question. So we've got minus four. So this is going to give us a H plus concentration of one times 10 to the minus 4 in this particular example. Then we're going to use that in our expression. We're going to rewrite our expression to work out the concentration of the salt. So we're going to have Ka. Multiply by the concentration of C6H5COOH over the H plus concentration. This is going to give us a value here of 6.31 times 10 to the minus 5. Multiply by the concentration here of the benzene carboxylic acid over the pH concentration, which we worked out. And hopefully we get 6.31 to the power minus 5 multiplied by 0 0.012 divided by 1 to the power minus 4. And we should end up with something which looks a bit like this, 7.572 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, since we're in one decimeter cubed, that is moles per dm cubed, we're going to need, therefore, 7.572 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of benzene carboxylic acid. And the final step, then, is to work out the mass equals MR times by the moles. I think we're given the MR in this equation of 144. So 
So I've got a value here of 1.09 grams. Did anyone else get 1.09 grams? No, I'm just seeing that. Yep, yep, yep. Good. Okay. Right. We shall then move on and see where we go to uh, with the next question. Oh, there we go. All right. Two solutions, one with a pH of four and the other with a pH, were left open to the air. The pH of the pH 9 solution changed more than that of the other solution. Suggest what substance might be present in the air to cause the pH to change. Explain how and why the pH of pH 5 new. Okay. This is a knowledge question about pHs. It's worth being aware of. They often ask it. And it's simply a fact that substance present in the air is CO2. And the CO2 solution, uh, CO2 forms carbonic acid. When dissolved in water. And the thing that we need to be aware of here uh, is the fact that the carbonic acid here is a weak acid. Therefore, unlikely to reduce the pH of 4.0, but it will affect the pH there of 5.00. Okay, so just to be aware that CO2 absorbs, it's often asked in sort of titration type questions as well. Okay, now we're moving on quite rapidly here into more buffer questions, which is good to see. Because these are always the ones that people tend to struggle with the most. So question four. Uh, now we've got our ethanoic acid, which is the classic one that they tend to use. A buffer solution is prepared using ethanoic acid and sodium methanoate. In the buffer solution, the concentration of ethanoic is 0.16 and the concentration of sodium ethanoic is 0.105. Calculate the pH of this buffer solution, giving your answer to two decimal places. Okay, so again, we're adding the salt to the acid. Uh, and concentration of sodium ethanoate. So we can express here Uh, our Ka in terms of the acid over the salt and therefore we got 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 giving us 0.186 over 0.105 Hopefully this one coming out 3.08 times 10 to the minus 5. Maybe I was on the wrong page before. And then if you calculate them and you forward your pH, you should end up with a pH equals minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration here of 4.1. 4 Okay, I'm going to move on. Now, here we're looking at the addition of acid, and this is quite a
In a different buffer solution, the concentration of ethanoic acid is 0.251, and the concentration of sodium methanoate is 0.14 mole dm minus two. Uh, a sample of hydrochloric acid containing 0.015 HCO is added to a liter of this buffer solution. So this is giving us a hand here of this giving us a thousand centimeters cube because this makes our calculations infinitely easier. Calculate the pH of the buffer solution after the HCO has been added. So again, we've got the Ka is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ions, CH3COO minus the salt over the acid so we're going to rearrange here for the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to ka and the acid over the salt now when we're doing these because we've got a constant concentration we can reduce this to moles of CH, CH3, COOH, and moles of CH3, COO minus. Okay, so that makes our calculations much more simple. Also, we have the moles of the ethanoic acid and the mass of the sodium the moles of the sodium ethanoate because we're in a liter so the moles of ethanoic acid are equal to 0.251 and the moles of ethanoate are equal to 0 0.140. Now, if we add 0 0.015 mole of hydrochloric acid, the new moles of A minus or the salt, well, they're going to be equal to 0 0.140 plus 0 0.015. Sorry, they're going to be equal to minus 0 0.015, and the new moles of acid, which I'm just going to call HA here, are going to be equal to 0. 251 plus 0.015 and therefore we have a new expression for H plus which is going to be Ka is equal to O I'm going to have to do that in a calculator which is rather depressing isn't it uh, O point Point two six six moles. Tell me if I get that one wrong. And our new moles of A minus are going to be 0 0.125, giving us a new concentration of where's our. Let me just check what our Ka value is. 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. I should know that, but I know the number of times I've written it. It's going to give us a new value of 3.70. 272 times 10 to the minus 5. And the final mark is to work out the pH here of the answer 
of 4.43. How do we get on with that one? Yeah, no worries, Enon. Certainly. Okay. So here we got to do two things. The key steps. So we're mixing solutions is what we're actually doing here. Okay. So well done, Aiden. So mixing solutions. So the when we got a, uh, I'm just going to write our expression out that we had before. H plus is Ka uh, multiplied by the acid concentration. Oh, actually, I'll call it Ha over the salt. All right. Um, This expression, what we've got to be able to work out is we've got to work out what our new values are in this reaction. Now, because the volume is constant, we can also simplify this reaction or the, the equation to H plus is equal to the moles of HA over the moles of A minus. Now, the next step or process that we have to do is we've got to see what happens when we mix solutions. And there's some simple steps which we can always do. So if we're mixing things, the first thing to do is to work out the moles of acid. The second step is to work out moles of base or alkali and so in this one I'm going to call it OH minus the third step is to work out what is in excess and then there's two routes that we can take from here if the acid is in excess then we use our equation here and what we confirm is that the work out new moles of HA now that will be uh, equal to the moles of HA before And then it's going to be minus the moles of OH minus. Now that's if OH minus is added, or as we saw in this case, it's plus the moles of H plus added that we saw because we were talking about a buffer situation. Then five is to work out new moles of A minus. Well, this is going to be the A minus before. Plus added moles of OH minus. Or take away the moles of H plus added. That will give you values for moles of HA and A minus, which we can use in our equation. 
we use these in uh, sorry not ka but h plus is equal to ka moles of acid over moles of a minus and then finally in step seven you work out the ph equals minus log of the h plus ion concentration okay so that's what i essentially did um, anon in this particular one uh encourage you if you're not sure about this to check out the buffer video um, in the section on the a-level chemistry resources in my youtube content it's a classic question um, and the covering here is essentially what we were looking at on this page of our revision notes here when we're adding and making an acidic buffer in this instance all right so it's where we're adding a weak acid to a strong base but we can also add a bit more acid okay i hope that helps oh good i'm pleased it helps Anna. um and hopefully it's given everyone else a respite i know we're rattling on now to 10 o'clock you're probably getting bored of my voice um let's carry on um i'm just gonna have a quick look here just take a pause for a moment I'm just going to check for some other questions. So just give me a moment. Evening. I'm just going to check appropriate questions to ask next. Okay, I'll just uh, go back to the screen. You'll see my face again. Good evening. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves. Uh, we'll come back to screen one here. I think we'll, we'll carry on with some of these questions, which are absolutely fine. Uh, um, Hey Maloney, uh, I plan to probably go twice a week. Um, for the seminars, if that's helpful, we'll start looking at exam papers as well that we've made up. Um, and the lengthier ones will probably be on uh, the more difficult concepts such as um, asses and bases and things like that. Um, just to add to that there'll probably be i aim to go for mondays and thursday evenings at the same sort of time 8 30 p.m and they'll generally last about uh, an hour and a half to well by looks things two hours so hopefully it will support you uh evening arsenal all right where are we up to we'll have a look uh Certainly, I think these are better than all day seminars. Hopefully, you find them more useful than all day seminars because uh, I just think you'd be goosed uh, after a, a full, after five hours, six hours of a full day seminar. Okay, question five then. If you're ready, let's have a look at question five. So we're now hydrogen carbonate. Here we go. A solution of chlorine in water is acidic. Swim pool managers maintain pool water at a constant pH by using a buffer. They do so by adding sodium hydrogen carbonate and sodium carbonate. 
Hydrogen carbonate ion HCO can act as a weak acid in aqueous solutions. Write an equation for this equilibrium. Okay, this one's worth knowing. It's not specifically required on your course, um, but the number of times that uh, it comes up in the exams about carbon dioxide dissolving into water, it's worth recalling it. Make sure you're aware of it for sure. And they're talking about an equilibrium, so require the reversible reaction sign there. Okay. Use this equation in part A to explain how a solution containing sodium hydrogen carbonate and sodium carbonate can act as a buffer when small amounts of acid or small amounts of alkali are added. Okay, so we've got here our equation, the hydrogen carbonate, CO3, 2 minus plus, uh, sorry, 2 minus plus our H plus. So you going to have to basically recall, I'm not going to write all of this out, the key here is if we add H plus, it's going to shift the equilibrium to the left, maintaining the concentration of the hydrogen ions, whereas if you add OH minus, you're going to get H plus plus OH minus making H2O, what's going to happen is the equilibrium will shift to the right, maintaining the concentration of the hydrogen ions. Again, on the revision notes, the key here for how a buffer works are in these two uh, little diagrams here. We're looking at an acidic buffer in that particular case, so you need to follow those key questions. So those are the ones to be aware of. So is that it for question five? Okay, question six. Here we go. Um, this is sort of a practical question. Being able to do some of these uh, buffer questions is in your required practical skills. They expect you to know how to use a pH meter um, and is in my practical skills video. So make sure you're aware of those. Um, here we go. This is uh, some graphing data where we've got some sort of acid. I know that because we're at a low pH. And here we're adding a volume of sodium hydroxide. The following figure shows a graph. Um, ammonium chloride, when dissolved in water, can act as a weak acid, as shown by the following equation. So there, the ammonium is acting as an acid. Ammonia is going to act as a base in the opposite direction. Suggest a suitable piece of apparatus that can be used to measure out the sodium hydroxide solution. So there, uh, practical question. Make sure you're going to get this correct you're going to use a burette now it can you've got two options for delivering them you've either got a pipette or you've got a burette burette is the most suitable here because you can use variable volumes okay pipettes are very good for accurate volumes but they only give you one accurate volume and therefore very useful this instance a burette so when you're doing the titration here we've got a change in volume make sure you're choosing burette as your suitable piece of equipment so practical skills remember paper three is heavily practical skills based um, and all of this is in your paper one uh, exam as well okay use information from the curve in the figure above to explain why the end point of this reaction would be difficult to judge using an indicator okay so here uh for to get a good indicator you need a sharp endpoint as we look here at the reaction we've got an endpoint here and that's over a range of volumes uh across about well almost two two milliliters for uh the volume change so here, there is a gradual endpoint change. And so the indicator would cover a range of values. So it's not an easy experiment there in which you'd be able to work out uh, the endpoint. The end point of the titration is 
uh, use the pH value and the ionic product of water, Kw. Kw, here we go. We must be talking about bases. Kw, we're given in the question. We must be using somehow in the calculation. So we're going to pull that one out of the bag. Calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide ions at the end of the reaction. Well, here we go. We the pH is equal to minus the log of hydrogen ions. So we can find this value out from the pH by doing 10, uh, sorry, hydrogen ion concentration, equal 10 to the minus pH. Uh, so if we put that into our calculators, uh, you should end up with a value equal to 1.58 times 10 to the minus 12. And then we're going to use that in our expression for Kw. So here we've got, uh, we rearrange for OH minus in this instance. Uh, and we say that that is Kw over H plus. We're given a value for, for Kw. So that's 1 times 10 to the minus 14 over this value over here. Uh, we whack that into our calculators, and we get around about 6.33 times 10 to the minus 3. So we get a mark here, a mark here, and a mark there. I think we're sort of all on the same ballpark there. Then we're on the expression for the acid dissociation constant for aqueous ammonium ions. Here we go. The initial concentration of the ammonium chloride solution was 2.00 mole dm minus 3. Use a pH of this solution before any so sodium hydroxide solution has been added. Okay, so what this means is that we're talking about before anything's been added. So in that instance, the NH3 concentration we can assume here is going to be equivalent to the hydrogen ion concentration and therefore our expression can reduce here to Ka is equal to H plus squared over NH4 plus. We've got a value for Ka so uh, rearrange here we're going to have h plus is equal here to the square root of ka times by nh4 plus uh, you put that into your calculators hopefully you're coming out around about the concentration of sorry uh, you use a ph I, I, completely miss we, we're actually looking for ka aren't we? so often we're looking for the concentration of hydrogen ions and the ph so actually we simply going to put into our expression here the hydrogen plus concentration which we're going to get from the ph uh, so the ph here for aqueous ions is let's find out what it was so we're going to read this off the graph. If we look at the graph, we've got a pH here of 4.6. So there we're using our graphing skills. So we've got to rearrange here for the H plus is equal to 10 to the minus 4.6, because that's what the pH is. Uh, we've got a value of 10 to the minus 4.6, which is going to give us 2.51 times 10 to the minus 5. So Ka, therefore, is going to be equal to 2.51 times 10 to the minus 5 all squared over the concentration here of the ammonium chloride solution. Here we assume it fully dissociates, so it's divided by 2. We put in that into our calculator. Our Ka value is going to be 3.15 times 10 to the minus 10. Okay, good question. Where does 4.6 come from? That's what I had to look for. Uh, 4.6 here is coming from our graph. So the initial concentration, I had to look, and before any sodium hydroxide, so that's going to be when the value of sodium hydroxide is zero, 
So that's a key skill. It's reading from the graph. It's reading 4.6 from the graph. Hopefully that answers your question. It got me completely off the hoop. I was clearly walking off and talking about something else. Okay. A solution contains equal concentrations of ammonia and ammonia mines. Use a value of Ka from part D. Uh, now, you can see here, if you haven't worked out a value, they're giving you an answer here. Uh, we're going to use a value of 3.15 times 10 to the minus 10 for this question. Uh, equal concentrations of ammonia and ammonium ions. So this here is actually something called the half neutralization point what we're going to do is we're going to look at this uh, specifically because it was a question which someone brought up from before the exam and so i just want or before this evening i'm just going to take a copy of the equation here just to explain half neutralization because it's just worth spending a couple of minutes thinking about what is required so here we're talking about uh yes Arsenal, they are all past exam paper questions ranging over several years And they're all from the AQA exam board as well. Okay, so here's our acid dissociation constant. We're talking about the reaction here where NH4 plus is with uh, forming NH3 plus H plus. So that's the reaction uh, that we're interested in. And what's happening is we're adding OH minus to this reaction. So the equation we're actually seeing is an H4 plus plus OH minus uh, is donating this, and we're forming NH3 uh, plus H2O. Now, what happens here is if we've got an equal amount of NH4 plus and NH3, then we must have e added half the amount of OH minus to get to that point because to start with this is almost zero this is almost zero and this is a value of let's say one now if I add 0.5 moles of OH minus well this value is going to go down because it reacts to 0.5 I'm just going to move this out of the way so that we can see And then as we add the OH minus, we increase the amount of NH3. So we're now here at 0.5. And as we saw before, the hydrogen ion is basically going to turn into water. So when we've got equal values of NH3 and NH4, we are said to be at half neutralization. Now, this is kind of important because what we can do is if we... Now saying that the value of NH3, and I'm going to highlight these in red, is equivalent to the value of NH4. Well, we know that NH3 is equal to the value of NH4 plus. We can rewrite this expression as NH3 over NH4 plus multiplied by the concentration of the hydrogen ions. What we also know is that these cancel out because they equal 1. So we end up with a simplified equation where Ka is equal to the H plus concentration. 
and I'm running out of room. I'll go over the right here. Uh, since pKa is equal to minus the log of Ka, and pH is equal to the minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentrations, what we can say is that pKa is equal to pH neutralization. So then, as we come back to our question, that we've got here, the expression for the, uh, we were on this page, use your value of Ka from part D to calculate the pH of this solution. Well, that's why this is quite simple. Because we said Ka is equal to H plus ion concentration, we can say pKa is equal to pH. And um, so simply, uh, we can take our value from the previous question here, which is 3.15, as pH is equal to minus the log of brackets 3.15 times 10 to the minus 10. Uh, pop that into your calculator. Hopefully, you find out a pH of 9.50. Okay, um, we're pretty much near the end. Question seven here. Um, we'll have a quick look because it's worth um, identifying this question. I'm not going to go through it in too much detail because it actually covers a lot of the stuff we've just seen. But pH curves here, we're talking about using a pH meter. They need to be calibrated because uh, over time, the accuracy decreases okay so they need to be calibrated and the important thing is over time so describe how you would obtain the ph for the titration curve well this is basically again a practical element but make sure you're aware of what you're doing you're going to measure pH using your calibration meter. Uh, you're simply going to add alkali here in small portions. Small aliquots might be a good word here. It means a small volume of liquid. Stir or swirl the mixture. Measure the pH. Repeat until alkali in excess. And also add in smaller volumes near the end point. So there, maximum of five marks in the six possible marking points. Okay, uh, this question then is about plotting graphs. So again, graphing skills, quite likely to come up there. I've just plotted here. It's exactly the same experiment, in fact, as we just saw for the previous question. So probably not a great one to choose. Apologies about that. Um, did use the volume of sodium hydroxide solution that would have been added at the half neutralization point of this experiment. This is where this is the point where half the amount of the weak acid has been neutralized. So here again, back to our half neutralization question that we had before. Well, here's our full neutralization. I'm going to just sort of plot that yeah, again, just because it finishes off. Oh, it's a bit thick. Our full neutralization is probably about there. It should have been drawn with a, let's do that with a straight line, sorry. Uh, full neutralization is probably around about 25. So half neutralization then is going to be about 12 and a half in this instance. Um, so that, give or take uh, a little bit, is going to be our half 
neutralization. It's simply half the volume for the endpoint when we're working these things out. This one it's not particularly clear because we've got a gradual endpoint to take notice of here. Um, again, so just be aware as we're going through these. We've we've just been through a question here about pKa that at half neutralization, Ka is equal to H plus, and therefore pKa is equal to pH. So make sure you're aware of that. Uh, then we're talking about some anomalous results. Well, you've got to think of some reasonable reasons that you might have it. So you might, the, the pH, well, it's clear when you actually look at the graph that you have to draw. It's clear that it's that one. So you might have had, uh, first of all, give the value and then bad swirling or not not stirred enough something like that it's probably the most likely reason here uh, so just how the experiment procedure could be slightly modified in order to give a more reliable value uh, so the only thing here when you look at this graph is at the end point uh, which is actually here there's very few points put in so increase the number of points at the end point would be worth including uh, I'm not going to go through the multiple choice, but there are 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's several multiple choice to have a go at at the end here. Um, the resources will be available for you to have a look at. So just before I go, I'll show you where all of the resources from this evening's webinar are going to go. Okay, so the webinar has been live throughout the evening on this page. All right, and our chat's been coming through here. Uh, I'm going to close the webinar shortly, but you'll find the past webinar will go into the past webinar section. Uh, it will go into this portfolio item. You'll see that the revision notes, well, that's going to give you the revision notes we saw previously. There is also going to be a link here to the past paper questions. I'll update this with answers. And there's also the notes from the webinar. So these OneNote notes uh, will have a link. If you click on that link, uh, you should get a section. In fact, I'll do that now just to show you. So Dr. Clay's webinar, 3rd of April, you'll get a highlight of the notes. If you click on the side here, you should be able to go through. You'll see the past paper questions and also the notes from the other questions that we've been looking at. So there they are updated. So you can keep them um, and just check on anything as you go through the webinar, if you wish. The actual video will be embedded here, so you can come back and check. Feel free to leave a comment, uh, an update. It'd be really good to get your feedback on the webinar, whether it's good, whether you enjoyed it. And if you don't mind, I might put some of those on the website. If you like the webinar, also, please do share with any of your colleagues and friends. Uh, the more that are involved, the better it gets. Okay, so I'm going to say good bye for this evening. Thanks for joining me in the webinar. The next one will be on Thursday evening, once again at 8.30 p.m. And I'm likely to do this on the session on either on organic chemistry or on the more recent topic of transition metals, which I've been updating uh, throughout the week. Go and check out these videos before the session because they're going to be extremely helpful. Uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for your time. You'll probably get a picture of my face just as we finish this session. Okay, thanks a lot. Good night.